Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here. I'm back again today doing another video. And the subject of today's video is going to be on casting a season of Survivor, which would be themed strategy versus challenge beasts. So I feel like in Survivor, there are a lot of players who base their entire game around strategy, treating other players as pawns, treating a game like it's chess or poker and trying to maneuver that way. And on the other hand, there are a lot of players that focus much more on the physical game and focus a lot more on like winning challenges and uh, getting individual immunities and rewards and stuff like that. So I think it'd be interesting to, to do a survivor cast of one tribe of strategists and one tribe of challenge beasts and see who in the end would ultimately prevail. Um, my prediction would be that it'd be it would be probably a challenge beast because in the beginning that tribe would do a bit better because they'd be winning more of the team immunities but maybe survivor could mix in some more like puzzle kind of challenges in the beginning to make it a little bit more even and get kind of like an even number of players from each side to the merge and then let the game go from there but it to me it'd be very interesting to see what would happen so first on the strategy tribe, I think, in my opinion, you got to have Russell Hance, a dude who completely transformed the way people think about strategy on Survivor, For, uh, particularly from Samoa and Heroes and Villains. His strategy was very bold and very effective in getting him to the final, uh, the final steps of the season. Redemption Island, really no success there, but that was because he basically just had a bad rap from his tribe, but he definitely is a very landmark figure in the world of Survivor's far strategy, and he's been saying he really wants to come back recently, so I think that makes him an ideal candidate. Next, we have Rob Sesternino from Amazon and the All-Stars. Rob was pretty revolutionary in the Amazon as far as how he did his strategy of flipping on alliances and backstabbing people and really having no allegiances to anybody concretely except himself. And I think that he'd be a really cool person to have back. And he obviously has a great mind uh, just in general and also for the game. So I think that he'd be a, a cool person to see back on a season like this. Next, I have David Wright, who to me actually is very similar to Rob in a lot of ways in that they're both really, really into Survivor and uh, like students of the game. And David displayed that in both of his seasons, both on Millennials and Gen X and Edge of Extinction, that he's just a fanatic about the game, and he knows a lot about it. And uh, for that reason, I think it'd be really cool to see him come back and be on a strategist season because he just has such a great mind for the game. Next, I have Todd Herzog, who, and just by the way, I am going to feature a, f a few winners on this cast, but... Um, like seasons like Heroes and Villains and Game Changers and um, others, there there can occasionally be some winners mixed into an all returnee cast. So I have Todd here. Um, on his season of China, he he displayed a lot of strategy between uh, how he dealed, how he dealt with people, and just how he maneuvered throughout the game and set up people to be blindsided and so on and so forth. So I think Todd is a really great strategist and. He's been away from the game for a while and he's had a lot of personal issues, but it seems like for the most part he's through those personal issues and it'd be nice to see him come back and um, get back to his strategizing that he was doing back in China. And then ultimately for the strategist tribe, lastly I have Steven Fishback who um, last played on Second Chance and also played in Token Chains and was really the brain half of that dynamic duo with JT and really has a mind for the game and... Um, like like Sester Nino and David Wright is really a student of the game and knows it really well and has said that when he's on Survivor he just wait, stays up all night all hours of the night like thinking through scenarios and different ways he can strategize and move people around the metaphorical chessboard as if they're his pawns so I think he's an embodiment of what strategizing on on Survivor really means. Next, I have Michaela Bradshaw, who displayed a lot of strategizing in Millennials and Gen X. Not as much in Game Changers, but in Millennials and Gen X, that's like directly why she got voted out was because she was doing a ton of strategy talk with her alliance, and they actually got fearful of her, so they blindsided her because they were afraid of how good of a strategist she was. So I feel like based on that, you got to have her on strategy versus physicality kind of season. Next, I have Aubrey Bracco from Ko Rong Game Changers and Edge of Extinction. I think in, in Ko Rong, she displayed tons of strategic acumen 
And so just for that reason alone, I'm putting her on here. She didn't display nearly as much in Game Changers or EOE, but um, I just think overall she has a great strategic mind and a very smart person, and she can do a lot in a season like this. Next, I have Natalie Anderson, both from San Juan del Sur and Winners at War. Winners at War, she was definitely more on the challenge beast side, but in San Juan del Sur, she did a lot of navigating and a lot of strategizing, and I think she really proved herself as a strategist, how she manipulated her alliances down the home stretch of the game to situate herself both next to the best people to face and then also just getting rid of people at the right time. So I think she's definitely a, a strategic uh, strategic force to be reckoned with and belongs on a season like this. And then Kelly Wentworth, who actually, uh, spo uh, man, our third Edge of Extinction person. I have a lot of people who were on the Edge uh, coming on this season, but Kelly was a really good strategist in, um, she actually, she did okay strategy in all of her seasons, not great, but it's also because she was put in really bad scenarios, I'd say. She actually probably displayed the best strategy in Edge of Extinction, in edge of extinction as she was one of the leaders of her own alliance but she also got blindsided in that season so uh, she's never had like a great great run where strategy was the reason why like in second chance it was mostly because of immunity wins but she has displayed a lot of ability to be a good strategist it just has never materialized and a season like this could be the opportunity for her to prove herself and then I have Sari, who's played many times, uh, four times, in fact. And in Panama and Micronesia, she displayed some great, great strategic acumen that have really carried her legacy. And they just showed people, I think you could argue she's one of the greatest strategic minds in the game ever. And that's why I would want her on this season. She's never quite made it to the finish line and been able to get in front of a jury, but uh, if she were on a season like this, she was sure as heck would have a chance. So I'd like to see what she could do on a season like this. Now for the challenge beast side of things. Number one, of course, Mike Holloway. He's tied the record for individual immunity wins with five. He just all the he just wins, wins, wins on his season. And I think he when you think about challenge beasts, he's one of the first people th uh, that come to mind. And so I think he'd be a must have on a season like this. Um, next, I have Joe from Worlds Apart, Second Chance, and EOE. So I have all four returning players from EOE actually returning for this season as well. But honestly, it just fit the bill. Uh, Joe, of course, has a great win percentage. And I believe I read that he's won 70% of challenges he's been involved in. So based on that, you kind of have to have him on here in a challenge beast tribe. Um, he won two individuals in... Uh, worlds apart and he won four straight in second chance and then i don't think he actually won any on edge of extinction but he uh he's a really awesome challenge beast and i think it'd be good to have him back to represent and i actually had to debate like whether him or ozzy because i debated having ozzy back but i figured joe's played one less time than ozzy it would have been ozzy's fifth time playing or this is only joe's fourth so for that reason i had joe back instead of ozzy Next, I had Colby, who this would be his fourth time out. He obviously set the pace of five individual immunities in Australia way back when. He That is a record that has not been broken to today, five individual immunities. On All-Stars, he had a relatively mediocre showing, and same on Heroes and Villains as far as immunity challenges go, but um, still respectable outing there, and... It'd just be fun to have him back, kind of like the godfather of being a challenge beast. So he may not do great on an all challenge beast tribe. He might be the weakest link considering he's a bit older now. I think he's like mid-40s, but he'd still be fun to have back. And he's a really fun personality and just a cool guy. So it'd be, it'd be nice to have him back on a season like this. Next, Brad from Blood vs. Water and Game Changers. He, of course, also tied the record of five in his second season and got really far in the game, so it would be cool to have him back. And as an ex-NFL athlete, I think he uh, he obviously has some physical talent and he would be an appropriate person to me to have back on a tribe like this. 
And then I have Terry, who on his season, on his first season, had uh, tied the record of five indi- individual immunity wins. So I think based on that, you got to have him back. And um, I don't know. I think he didn't really get much of a shot that he deserved on second chance. So he deserves to come back another time. And I believe the excuse me. I believe the only person from um, the five timers club besides Ozzy, who I didn't include here, was Tom Westman. And that's mainly because Tom Westman's kind of aged out of the age where you'd want to be on Survivor. I think when he was on initially season 10, he was like early 40s and now he's like late 50s. And he's, I don't know, he's just gotten a little bit older and in less good of shape. And I just don't think he'd be up for another season of Survivor. So I didn't include him. And then obviously Ozzy has played four times. This would be his fifth if I included him. And that just felt like a lot, so I, I decided to go with Joe, who is pretty similar uh, and is a bit younger, too. Next for the women, I have Kelly Wigglesworth, who in Season 1 set the record for individual immunity wins uh, and also by a woman. And that record of individual female immunity wins of four still stands to today, so I feel like she's a must-have on a season like this. Then you got Chrissy Hoffback, who tied that record at four. Uh, from season 35 I feel like she's a must-have as well just because of that record itself she also had a pretty successful run pre-merge where her tribe won a lot of challenges so overall she has been really successful in challenges and I think belongs on a season like this Uh, Laura Moret basically this is from blood versus water that I think she'd be a good candidate to come back she had a lot of those redemption island duels where she won them and she just did great in basically all of those challenges. And so, honestly, based on that, uh, I think she deserves to come back. Also in Samoa, her pre-merge tribe did amazing, so she won tons of challenges there. So her win percentage overall is really, really solid, so I think she deserves to come back. I have Kim, uh, Michelle excuse me, from Korong and Season 40, Winners at War. She did pretty decent with individual immunity in both seasons, and so... I decided she'd be a good fit to come back, and also she can represent a winner coming back as well, which I think would be a good touch. So with that being said, each tribe would have two former winners, one male and one female. We'd have Todd, Natalie, Mike, and Michelle, so I think that that'd be a good balance. And lastly, I have Amanda, who had some pretty good individual immunity runs in China and Micronesia, winning it a couple of times on each season. Overall, she's been a person who was in really good shape on her seasons and was able to perform physically really well, so I think she'd be a good addition, and also we haven't seen her in a really long time, and she actually played three times within six seasons on Survivor, and that's a a lot, but honestly, I think it might be time for her to make a return and see what she can do again um, like 10 years later now. Uh, That's all I got for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on casting a season like this of like strategy versus challenge beast and what changes you would make to my list or what ideas you'd have. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.